What is up? I'm Harbor with Extra Credit Design Club, and in this video, we are going to answer the question of what in the heck in the world is a variable font? I am going to hit this from two different angles. First, what is a variable font from the perspective of a graphic designer? And second, what is a variable font from the perspective of a typeface designer? So, you're a new graphic designer, your cool friends are talking about a hey, variable fonts, and you're gonna pretend like you know what it means because you don't wanna look uncool in front of your cool design friends, and then now you came home and you Googled it, and here we are. Variable fonts. So to illustrate what a variable font is, I'm gonna hop into Illustrator. Boom, pun unintended, but that's just how I am. We have here this font, Lastic. And you're familiar with this convention. I can choose regular, semi-bold, bold, extra bold, black. I got options here. This is nothing new. This is a normal font. Or is it? So Elastic is a font that I just so happened designing because I'm the best type designer in the world. I made this a variable font. So in the Adobe Softwares, Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign, unfortunately not After Effects. I don't know what they're doing. But in the major three, you will have this little button here in your character panel or in a similar place in the different softwares. If you click it, if your font is a variable font, you will have a slider. Normally it goes from one or zero to a hundred. In this case, it starts on 50. And that's a preview because a skinnier version is yet to come. But hey, you heard it here first anyways. What I can do with this slider is dial in the exact weight of the font. So if black is a little too much, you want to, okay, maybe kind of in between black and extra bold, or maybe you want it just past a regular. It's the Burger King of font technologies, baby. Have it your way. And it's not limited to just choosing the weight. For example, I'll use Curtis here, which is another typeface I designed, also variable, but this one I can choose the width and the weight, right? So I have two different axes that I can control. For example, if I want to fill this space entirely, I can do just that. Boom, get my ratios looking right. You know, it is just a more powerful design tool. However, it's not limited even to just width and weight. You can do optical size, you can do italic angle, and those are the common ones. But the options are endless. This technology is still somewhat new, only really catching on full send around 2016-ish. So the possibilities of how a font might be variable, which different axes, it doesn't have to be weight and width. It might be X height, it might be roundness, it might be grooviness, it might be caterpillariness, where if you whoop it up, your font won't is more caterpillary or, oh, I just thought of this. If you had an axis that was cocoon and down here it was caterpillar and up there it was butterfly, you know what? I'm not going to make it. You can have that idea. That's free. I digress. Now that we have a base knowledge, I'm going to go back to full screen and hit you with a couple applications of why variable fonts are not just gimmicks, but actually extremely useful. The number one application for variable fonts, and this is how I got into them, was for setting headlines. I was working for a guy who wanted everything big, bold, negative space, more like negative get out of my face. He wanted everything to fill the page. And I had to do a bunch of different product labels, and I couldn't quite get a font that would fill exactly the parameters, so I had to turn to a variable font. Also, animation 
is becoming a must in the design space. Any brand that's worth its salt is incorporating animation or motion graphics into their branding, their visual identity, whatever you want to call it. And variable fonts are so much easier to animate than a static old, you know, we've seen that before font. Also, variable fonts are super practical when it comes to web design. In the past, if you wanted the bold, the medium, the light, different styles of a typeface all on your website, you had to upload five, six, seven different font files and it slowed down your website. Variable fonts are just one font file with all of that information and so uploading just one font file to your website, even though it's a more powerful, more robust font file, will actually cut down the load time of your website. And going even further, there are instances where you can animate the parameters of your variable font based on actions you take or parameters in your browser. So you might be able to change the window size and that will dictate how condensed your font is or according to where your mouse is on the page, your font will be bold or light or the possibilities are endless. I also have a video where I talk about modern fonts and modern technology. If you want to dive more into that, you can also check out that video. And I would encourage you to start experimenting with variable fonts. Great place to start is thatthattype.com, baby. I'm biased, but hey, we got a couple of good ones there. Stepping back from the perspective of a type designer, chances are you know what variable fonts are previous to this video. If not, you at least know now. I am going to hop into a design file that I did for Curtis variable font and show you kind of the more under the hood what is going on. Here we have Curtis. I first designed this as a single weight, this extra condensed kind of regular weight it was very inspired by Druck. If you read the name Curtis, it's got Druck in there, spelt backwards, and Curtis is my middle name. So I thought, hey, you know, I like Druck, but I think I can give it just a little bit of a different personality, how I would do it. There's some things that I don't like about it, and I thought maybe it won't be better, but it'll be different. Anyways, I first designed this style with the potential in my mind, if this catches on, if people like it, I'm going to expand it out into a variable font, and that's what I did. You can see up here on the top left, I have all these different masters. So when you are designing a variable font, you design the extreme ends of the spectrum. So I have, boom, here, super condensed, regular, super condensed, heavy, then I have super wide, regular, super wide, heavy. And when I designed these four masters and I was working on interpolation, I noticed that in the middle, so if I was kind of medium width, medium weight, things were looking wonky. So I decided to design a medium width with a regular weight and a medium width with a heavy weight. Even though the minimum requirements are just designing the extreme ends of the spectrum, it probably is a good idea if your two ends are very extreme to also design the middle of the road option. Now, if I click in to this end, for example, I'm gonna zoom in here. I'm gonna take away speed punk. I am going to show master compatibility. We have our different ends, and this shows my different interpolation, how each one relates to the other. When you are designing a variable font, I'm not gonna get too into the weeds of the tutorial of it, but basically what happens is this point relates to this corner point on the end, and moving forward, each point relates to its point on whichever master sheet it's on. 
So, as an example, even though this little ink trap looks like it doesn't exist, if I zoom in here, I have two points there because on this version, the super condensed, I have two points here. So the important thing when you are designing variable typefaces is that you have the same number of points in each different glyph, in each different master style. That will ensure that your interpolation is smooth as butter, or not even that. It will ensure that interpolation is possible. The smooth as butterness will take some finesse and practice. In your glyphs file, if you want to create a variable font, you are going to go up to this info panel on the top left. And you are going to go to master, and you are going to add different masters. And with those masters, you can define extra condensed, extra condensed black, regular. You define what they are. And then in your font, you can choose the different axis. Here I have width and weight, but I can add optical size. I can add even just fanciness. I can add anything I want as a type designer and get real spicy. Then finally, when it comes time to export your variable font in exports, you can add plus an instance. Even though we have defined our masters, our extreme ends, and maybe something in the middle, we can define any number of steps in between. So if you remember in my Illustrator file, here we have our variable options, but we also have our normal, what people are used to. I have condensed, condensed semi-bold, condensed bold, extra bold black, semi-condensed, bum 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 bum, regular, bum bum bum, and I have defined each individual instance just to make it slightly more user-friendly. Again, variable fonts are somewhat new technology and people don't automatically go to this variable font preview and dial in exactly what they want. So as you go about adding different instances, you will be able to define the width and the weight on a scale from one to 100 for each instance. Here we have it. And then you can give it a weight class and a width class, and you name it. And bada bing, bada boom, when you have everything all nice and laid out, one more time, you hit plus and you add variable font settings, then you get this bad boy here, your variable font. From there, it's a simple matter of file, export, and you choose variable fonts, define where to save it, and that is that. If you want my opinion, the perspective of a type designer, if you are looking into designing type, definitely Definitely, once you have a gauge on just basic type design essentials, start exploring variable fonts. For me, it is what sells the best because I think it is simply a better product. So it works for me. I can sell them at a higher price. A customer will get much more value compared to what they paid for traditional fonts, and both parties are super happy about it. I do plan on doing an in-depth series about designing variable fonts. That's the number one question I get asked as a type designer. Talk about variable fonts. Teach how to do variable fonts. So I do plan on getting around to it if I haven't already by the time you're watching this. As always, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. Anything else you want me to talk about, let me know. I'm Harbor with Extra Credit Design Club, and we'll catch you in the next.